Uh, I'm, I'm just visiting Taipei for three months. Uh, I've been here about six months. I work as a, work as a data scientist in, in San Francisco and um, my partner and I were planning on traveling to Taiwan for a little while and then like COVID, COVID struck and we ended up getting it coming here on the gold card visa. And so we've mm -hmm. been spending, we took some time off and now, now I'm working remotely. Um, and I, I was just like uh, reading a lot about the digital democracy efforts that you've mm -hmm. been leading in Taiwan and I wanted to ask more about that and, and understand the uh, understand it. So in particular, I was curious about uh, V-Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so v Which is weekly meeting, by right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah I guess I, yeah, I guess like one question that I had for starters is, um, I, I noticed that like, I, I looked at the website and it seemed like a lot of topics hadn't been updated mm -hmm. recently? Is it, mm -hmm. still, is it still active, still going on? Yeah, it's still active. Uh, I think uh, recently they've uh, worked with the Open Parliament mm -hmm. uh, people mm -hmm. uh, on getting the national action plan from the parliament side mm -hmm. uh, of open government out. Yeah. Uh, there's also a recent discussion about social enterprise uh, mm -hmm. related acts and so mm -hmm. on. I think there's going to be one about uh, like shared, uh, I don't know, U-bike or shared mm -hmm. e-scooters or something mm -hmm. soon, but I don't run uh, V-Town day-to-day -day anymore uh, mm -hmm. because I've become um, the digital minister in 2016, October, mm -hmm. and then I just handed the uh, governance, the, the leadership of VTaiwan to other people in the GovZero community. Uh, but we've taken the VTaiwan Inspire model and installed a roughly equivalent structure uh, within the central government called the Participation Officer Network, which primarily uh, oversees, for example, cross-ministerial uh, e-petitions on the joint platform. Yeah. I, I might take notes, by the way. Is sure, of course, one? go ahead. Yeah. Cool. Or we're going to be on the record anyway. Yeah, that's uh, so true. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll take notes anyway, so it's like sure, sure, of course, of course. For purposes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, are the meetings open to anyone? Yeah, sure, uh, of course. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, just just drop by. You, yeah. you too can drop me talent. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I was, I was curious about that. And then, what what do you? So I think there was a paper published in twenty eighteen about mm -hmm. the how the pro the process, and I think at that point. The major mm -hmm. initiative that had gone through the process was the Uber regulation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, have yeah. you had any like Airbnb, uh, yeah. online liquor sales, mm -hmm. and so on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess maybe you're not the best person to ask, but have you had any like mm -hmm. learnings about the process since then, mm -hmm. like things that? have been successful and things mm -hmm. that have been less successful? Sure. Uh, so VTown had a, a very narrow mandate in yeah. that only uh, emerging digital economy related issues mm -hmm. uh, could be deliberated. Yeah. And this is fundamentally because it's a self-selecting, self-electing yeah, uh, right. process, right? right People right, who, right. who find time contri to contribute uh, set agenda through uh, crowdsourcing. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we uh, apply this to I don't know, marriage equality or mm -hmm. uh, some other uh, mm -hmm. domestic issues that are unrelated to the mm -hmm. digital, then the uh, self uh, electing uh, nature of the Vita yeah. community could be a problem because uh, there really is no uh, balance in including the stakeholders on um, the less digitally connected uh, parts mm -hmm. of the society. Mm -hmm. So it was a uh, pilot, it was an experiment. And so it was quite successful in tackling the issues where there's no or almost no traditional representation. The mm -hmm. first few cases, for example, there was no unions mm -hmm. of teleworkers. Um, mm -hmm. There was no unions of gig economy. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, of course, there are, but back in 2015, there were not. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no business association mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. all the startups that registered at Cayman Islands. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there, there's no um, traditional uh, councils or associations or heads of representative uh, trade councils and so on to, to talk to. Mm -hmm. right? But we need to regulate that anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. it's easier because there was no better alternative. Mm -hmm. But in uh, more traditional politics where there are uh, uh, like the uh, existing entrenched representatives, mm -hmm. uh, this methodology wouldn't quite work as yeah. is, and it needs improvement specifically taking into the account uh, the face-to-face -face component of deliberation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you, have, do you have plans to expand it to other areas, like an increased mm -hmm. participation? Yeah, it's that? already done. The, yeah. the joint platform, as I mentioned, uh, yeah. counts uh, more than 10 million uh, visitors. I think consistently uh, millions of visitors uh, oh. every month. Oh. So uh, it's almost half, or probably already over half, mm -hmm. uh, of adult population uh, in Taiwan, uh, which is actually uh, not the whole story because one quarter, more than one quarter of petitions there were started by people who are not even 18. Oh, yeah. uh, right? So non adults also yeah. play a big part there too. And, and I think that's fundamentally where we're going uh, because uh, instead of having the 16 year old, 15 years old thinking that they have to wait uh, a number of years before 
before they participate in the democracy, mm -hmm. why not just have them set the yeah. agenda uh, through e-petition? So we've yeah. already uh, expanded that quite considerably using the joint platform. Yeah, that makes sense. Does the joint platform, is it based on Polis or is it your own um, Yeah, each joint uh, deliberation uh, can choose a different set of technologies, mm -hmm. uh, but the petition side is our own platform. Mm -hmm. But uh, the design is from Iceland, uh, from Vete de Kavik, mm -hmm. uh, and where each petition, once they collect 5,000 signatures, get a point-by-point -point response by the ministries. Uh, and uh, there's a pro column, there's a contra column, but there's no reply button. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can upvote and downvote, but there's no way for troll to grow. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's very balanced. Uh, but uh, if it's cross-ministerial issue, like if it's a wide disagreement even within the government about mm -hmm. how to define the thing, uh, well, we usually use polis uh, mm -hmm. in a way to crowdsource the common values out of those very different positions. That's right. Yeah. Then how do you like authenticate users on the platform? Mm -hmm. Do people mm -hmm. register with like their ID? The joint platform uh, uses SMS. SMS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. So just you have to have a Taiwanese number. Do you, do you worry about people registering fraudulent accounts? Mm -hmm. Well, if you get like 50,000 uh, or just 50 uh, SIM card numbers, uh, the anti-money laundering people will be after you okay. anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually quite expensive to get uh, 50 SIM card yeah. without getting yeah. notified. But yeah. uh, some people have two or three phones, that's fine. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and then, uh, let's see. So what, um, do you, do, have, you, have you noticed like as you scale this, like any pain points or any issues with um, it sounds like access is really good. So yeah, sure. Um, Broadband is human, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, are, are there any other learnings that you have from like the um, mm -hmm. from the past like two years or mm -hmm. like? The, the Four years program, now. like since yeah. you turned it into a joint platform. Yeah, uh, I think uh, people. Uh, really, really like to set uh, the agenda by themselves mm -hmm. without the government setting the agenda to, to yeah. discuss. Yeah. Uh, the only exception seems to be like really early stage as the agenda setting. For example, when we ask people, uh, what do we need to do when we're opening up mountains for mountaineering, for mm -hmm. hiking and things like that? There are, of course, uh, competing values at play about natural preservation, indigenous nation preservation mm -hmm. uh, and things like that, but also uh, better access also translate to more people caring right uh, and that's one one part there's also a part uh, about opening up the oceans like mm -hmm. uh, professional uh, fishing people and amateur fishing people mm -hmm. uh, and these are like different profiles and sometimes they see uh, things as zero-sum but actually uh, with education many people can uh, understand the oceans more and so on so for these like really broad like mm -hmm. there's no fixed set of solutions uh, mm -hmm. issues uh, then it's a little bit like the digital issues that we how I used to tackle in that the crowdsourced uh, feelings and the crowdsourced like general uh, narratives from personal perspective start to become very valuable. But if this uh, is just one predefined trade-off between uh, existing value, like one value versus another, then there's less chance uh, for the police or any crowdsourced approach uh, to work, which is usually at a later uh, part of the stage. So citizen initiatives or early enough stage uh, conversation where it's about feelings and values, do you seem to draw the most number of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you find like special interests like tend uh, to be more or less represented? Because I, I think like, I want, so one problem we have in the United States is that a lot of um, policy that's done at the community level is um, done by like in-person meetings and like just to get to these meetings, like oftentimes they might be held like during the day or like at an inconvenient time or inconvenient place. And so people who are working can attend them and like maybe people who are retired or overrepresented or something. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you find that like having the online platform Mm -hmm. improve like like th does it increase the mm -hmm. presence or decrease the presence of special interests in the mm -hmm. decision making process Do yeah uh, back when Vitaewan first uh, used Polis, mm -hmm. um, I think the first uh, UberX case mm -hmm. uh, really gets a lot of people loving this way or another, of yeah. course. Yeah. But once we resolved that and, and saw the common values, uh, the next one we tackled was uh, Airbnb. And interestingly, Airbnb said it, sent an email to all its Taiwanese members yeah. asking them to go to Polis yeah. <laughs> and advocate the Airbnb yeah. position. Uh, yeah. So I guess uh, with asynchronous modes of communication, mm -hmm. there's more opportunity 
for this kind of mobilization to go on simply because uh, online mobilization takes less effort, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but much to, I guess, Airbnb's surprise, only about one third of the members uh, they mobilized actually agree with the Airbnb yeah, position. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because Polis is very high bit rate. Uh, it's a crowdsourced mm-hmm. like wiki survey. Mm-hmm. So if this is just a yes or no question, maybe mm-hmm. Airbnb would have uh, succeeded in mobilizing the people. But when people go to Polis, they see very nuanced eclectic positions yes. uh, so that even if they are Airbnb member, they would still prefer like, um, I don't know, better uh, like firefighting inspections, mm-hmm. uh, like better insurance policies, like better bargaining power from the uh, individuals uh, in, as opposed to like people who actually own a chain of, um, you know, uh, uh, r- units that pretends that these are just my spare houses. Of course, that's not the case, right? <laughs> so, so, so people still have uh, like legitimate uh, improvements uh, that they really want to see. Uh, even if they have already lived in Airbnb uh, for a few days before, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think more than two thirds actually offered constructive criticism uh, to the Airbnb position, even if they uh, actually, given that they're uh, mobilized by Airbnb newsletter. I, I don't think special interest is that big a problem because mm-hmm. people are given much more bit rate to express. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and like, just in general, like, uh, what do you what do you focus on these days if it's not like? Running B Taiwan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, like what, what are you what are you mainly worried about? Like mm-hmm. I don't know, in the past like month. Well, uh, t- counter infodemic and counter pandemic mm-hmm. uh, has been yeah. the focus for the for the yeah. past year. Yeah. I spent quite a bit of time with gold card holders actually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, simplifying the process. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, are you uh, a uh, economic affairs or science yeah. and technology? E- economic affairs. Economic yeah. affairs, right? Yeah. So, yeah, the science and technology ministry uh, just relaxed massively uh, last Christmas, okay. so that anyone with the potential to contribute to science or technology okay, yeah. uh, are eligible. Which is pretty yeah. much everyone. Yeah, because like, I applied on the science and technology track and mm-hmm. had, had to wait for my application to be rejected, mm-hmm. which took a month because I guess the yeah, I know, I know, yeah, yeah. yeah, and and yeah, most of the most uh, gold card uh, pro, uh, applications end up uh, finding that MOEA is easier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and most changed that last uh, Christmas. So there's a bit of friendly competition. Yeah, right. um, so so I think uh, yeah, what, what we're seeing now is that Taiwan is becoming a much more transcultural place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. that uh, people are based in Taiwan but working on uh, international projects. Yeah. So uh, the presidential hackathon, for example, we've seen record number of uh, people who were not based in Taiwan but mm-hmm. nevertheless participate uh, in the presidential hackathon. Mm-hmm. So I uh, spent a lot of time working on the presidential hackathon uh, mm-hmm. and also um, similar hackathons like the Co-Hack and so on, which also use POLIS mm-hmm. to crowdsource norms that's acceptable around data for fighting COVID uh, for the five countries participating and we really get some uh, pretty good, uh, like um, the the contact tracing apps that mm-hmm. generates one time link, but mm-hmm. does not actually report your whereabouts uh, yeah. anywhere outside your phone or things like that. Yeah, yeah, cool. That's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so, have you, have you found success in like introducing, like, like I think I think also like um, like you mentioned, you're working on um, rebuilding some government um, websites and, mm-hmm. and properties mm-hmm. with with. Or modern technologies, and also mm-hmm. like introducing some crowdsourcing oh, yeah. through hackathons mm-hmm. and other yeah, that's right. websites. Like, it, um, I guess what it, what have your findings been in that area? Mm-hmm. It's kind of an open-ended question, but sure. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, we we run the Ray project. Ray being rescue action by use. So yeah. R A Y uh, dot P D I S. The TW, the Ray project for fourth uh, year now. Uh, we're in uh, about to begin the fifth year, uh, where we ask for interns, uh, usually um, like. Uh, younger uh, graduate level, but also mm-hmm. higher undergrad level, mm-hmm. uh, to dedicate two months of their time, uh, three people at a team, to look at any government website that they don't like uh, and change yeah. it for the better. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the first couple of years is all about the, the chores. The first year, uh, the interns did nothing but fixing websites so it works not in an IE only way, yeah, uh, right. which is good because yeah. the Microsoft deprecated IE right afterward. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, and, and the next uh, year, all we did was to ensure responsive uh, web design. So it mm-hmm. works uh, on phones of all different widths. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. But after those two, like, like very infrastructure work. The third year, see, uh, for example, the hiking portal, uh, where uh, if you go to hike in Taiwan, depending on your uh, trail, you will have to apply to f- like up to four different mm-hmm. agencies, each with their own website. Mm-hmm. So we use the open API um, 
uh, spec to yeah. make sure that existing websites are turned into API endpoints and then the interns build this uh, single portal hike that I want uh, that can uh, just uh, plan your, your trip. And because it's API based, so an ecosystem of apps and so on, uh, additional services built upon those APIs. Later on, we'll repeat that for Ocean.Taiwan. And then uh, last year, they started working with municipal governments. So the main lesson is that if the career public service can see the young people as you know, once bringing gifts, almost like reverse mentors, yeah. uh, instead of just criticizing them, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so they can see this partnership as a really good in terms of time saver. Uh, they, they don't have to like debug yeah. <laughs> their website anymore, right? Yeah, Anyone yeah. who see something wrong also suggests something better. Yeah. Uh, it it decreases the risk and yeah, it yeah. also improves mutual trust. Yeah. So much so, I think uh, we don't uh, have the allotted quota of interns anymore for this year's rate because yeah. many other municipalities and uh, government ministries start to uh, think about interns as teleworking interns. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of them actually want more quota because they see that this is actually a great way to improve the digital service. Yeah, so well, uh, what technology stack do you use in the government? Mm -hmm. for, is it kind of all over the place, like depending on which website it is? Or do you have um, we, we, we strongly system? prefer open API, mm -hmm. like the Linux Foundation okay, standard, uh, the speedy uh, yeah. open source manifest. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that the point is that as long as you speak open API, uh, that all human interactable parts, uh, whether it's machine writable or machine readable, uh, has a API equivalent. We, we don't quite care which technology stack you use because then it's shaped like a Lego block yeah, that, yeah. that other services can plug into. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the open API spec is actually piggybacking on the universal accessibility uh, track where mm -hmm. uh, if people uh, contract a government website and a vendor says, oh, I can do this for people with sight but not with blindness, yeah. uh, they could be disqualified for discriminating yeah. Right, yeah, against right, yeah. people with blindness. Um, yeah. So we piggyback on that and say if you deliver a website but you don't speak open API, uh, well, you discriminate against robots, <laughs> they could be yeah, disqualified. Yeah. So th yeah. that's the, the thing we insist upon. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, that makes sense. So, um, do you have like Maybe I could have figured this out already, but um, do you publish a lot of your uh, government websites as open source on GitHub or GitHub? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, our GitHub repo is PDIS. PDIS, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. I think, I think I've seen that before. Um, that's awesome. And then, and then so, so I guess you also, um, you focus a lot on like fighting disinformation mm -hmm. um, in Taiwan. It's basically just like fast, like, like I guess like the strategy mm -hmm. is like fast response to disinformation specifically around mm -hmm. COVID. That's right. And um, like I think, I think like using memes and humor to uh, mm -hmm. to spread mm -hmm. information faster right. than disinformation. Um, yeah, like uh, it has, has it only been for COVID or you've also been fighting disinformation? It's general purpose. Uh, so the CoFacts project of Dev Zero mm -hmm. uh, is one of the first uh, team to use uh, wiki-like dynamics mm -hmm. uh, so that when people flag something as spun or mm -hmm. uh, potentially disinformation uh, on even into end encrypted channels like Line, uh, mm -hmm. it gets uh, trending on a dashboard. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the CoFax people can just uh, wiki crowdsource the most uh, viral ones, the ones that have an R value above one, so that the fact checkers can concentrate their energy on one because uh, each day there's only this um, much of mental bandwidth <laughs> of the population. Only this many disinformation will trend any particular day, right? Because it's competitive space. Mm -hmm. So if we focus on inoculating only the trending ones, then we don't mm -hmm. waste our time uh, mm -hmm. working yes. on the ones that will yeah. probably not be trending anyway. So the dashboard is also important. The economic sector, uh, for example, Trend Micro, Taiwan's leading antivirus company, also have a uh, uh, what, what they call a from a, a um, disinformation Buster, uh, right? That uh, also works on this area where you can invite a bot into your line chat channels, and it just scans each incoming message and uh, just posts out a clarification if it detects scam or disinformation. Another uh, startup called Who's Call uh, also offers a very similar offering called Meiyu and so on. So there's an ecosystem about it now. Mm -hmm. Cool, awesome. And have you? Um, I guess going back to the. Um, like like some of the work you've done with like introducing more technology in government. Have you have you like seen any challenges or pushbacks or like any any like mm -hmm. kind of stumbling blocks in mm -hmm. getting wider? Uh, I, I don't know, like like more more adoption of of open technologies mm -hmm. in government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most of all, I think the. Uh, 
fear, uncertainty, and doubt seems to be centering around cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you use open source code, you implicitly let random strangers upgrade your system. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, and that's uh, not a very good position yeah, <laughs> to yeah. be in. So yeah. uh, literally, the first thing I did when, uh, as a digital minister is to recompile the Linux kernel so we can mm -hmm. run secure Linux mm -hmm. uh, and run a security product called Sandstorm mm -hmm. so that even mm -hmm. untrusted uh, applications could be run within a container that deflects or mitigates pretty much all the XSS and other attacks. And so on. And we got the uh, Dev Core team, uh, which I think is second place in DevCon uh, CTF, uh, to do penetration testing until they say Sandstorm is secure, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we do uh, just to have a sans uh, sandbox uh, security perimeter and also run penetration testing. So the Polis uh, mm -hmm. system at polis.gov.tw now is also public digital infrastructure. Even though it's open source, we also do penetration testing and things like that. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And, and so it's almost the technology you use for kind of web based running in Sandstorm? That's right. Yeah, and okay, interesting. Um, and we and use that for all our uh, transcripts and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, and do you use like, uh, is there like a Google Docs equivalent? I forget. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, we use CodeMD, uh, which is the open source uh, variant of the Tiny Startup HackMD. Okay, gotcha. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, I guess like another, another question I had, um, are, you, are you involved in the, di the digital ID card project? Mm -hmm, yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I guess like what are the goals of the Taiwanese digital ID cards? Are, is there like an additional, an addition, sorry, an eventual ambition to allow people to vote, for example, mm -hmm. using their ID cards? Well, at least for the e-collecting, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, currently, uh, we already have a PKI card, the Citizens Digital Certificate, or the CDC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is that the CDC only maybe has one quarter of people who have ever used it once. Mm -hmm. The active users uh, is even smaller, mm -hmm. uh, and mostly because the CDC um, really isn't used much uh, in yeah. other and paying taxes and so on, yeah. right? So um, the CDC as a way to authenticate oneself is, is going on. Uh, there's, there's nothing going to change about it. Mm -hmm. um, the main um, idea from the Ministry of Interior is that since we already have a paper-based ID card and a PKI-based card, mm -hmm. the CDC, uh, maybe we can uh, ship these two cards in the same form factor mm -hmm. so that more people will uh, have to, uh, CDC access. Of course, that also raises a lot of um, cybersecurity uh, issues because mm -hmm. Uh, for the paper-based cards, sometimes people, uh, when they uh, go to a parking lot, uh, they just uh, exchange this card for a coupon of the parking ticket. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, and, but if this is a, a CDC, if this is a digital certificate, yeah, then yeah. that opens a host of uh, attack surfaces and so yeah, on. Yeah. So people understandably, uh, and with the uh, more experience about the health IC card, which is mm -hmm. universal uh, mm -hmm. last year, um, people demanded that maybe we need, uh, like Estonia, to have a specific act about the norms of what to do, what not to do, mm -hmm. uh, with a universally issued uh, citizen digital certificate. So mm -hmm. we're now working on that act, and if it's passed by the legislature, mm -hmm. uh, then there could be like real um, consequences uh, for parking lots or hotels mm -hmm. insisting on you know having the photocopies oh, yeah. of your yeah, ID cards. Like sports centers, I guess. Like, <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. Like that's right. A racket or something. That's right. That's right. I mean, if people ask for your uh, you know a photocopy of the backside of your credit card, you would yeah. probably flip out, right? That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess even the existing ID has a lot of, it, it has some information on it. I don't know what's on there, but it's like mm -hmm. probably information they don't want to just like pre That's right, exactly, to, exactly. To so we improved that design, but people said that at regulation level, uh, uh, like what to do, what not to do, doesn't really carry any penalties as such. Uh, and so people wanted a special act for it. So we're working on that act draft. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, that's exciting. Um, and then, wait, I have another question here, but I heard, sure, sure. Where, did I, where did I write it down? Um, uh, I, I guess uh, it's, I had I had like it's fine. like slipping it's fine. my mind. Um, I, I think I think you're also working on promoting digital innovation in yeah, Taiwan and sure. just like trying to bring in more. Like, like what, what are you doing in that area? I think I think mm -hmm. is the goal, especially with the gold card, to bring in more entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. yeah, and people to start people who are here for the I don't know food and broadband, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. hiking and surfing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, frankly speaking, uh, we we are not saying that the gold card uh, holders need to be like forever staying in Taiwan, yeah. but we do want to uh, share our experience in both broadband as a human right and also digital competence as a basic. 
education curriculum thing uh, to uh, people in the world so that uh, when we fix uh, local problems uh, like the infodemic and the pandemic uh, the Taiwan model can also be shared uh, with the gold card holders and through them to the international community uh, how to tackle um, the pandemic with no lockdown and how to tackle the infodemic with no takedown and, and offering our model as a preferred um, at least more democratic uh, model uh, that uh, other liberal or social democracies uh, would like to partner on. So this is a, a more Taiwan can help uh, approach in international help, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and like, what, what, what else are you doing aside from the Gold Card program to promote mm -hmm. innovation? I, I guess like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know a lot about this because I haven't, There's for example, tried general to, purpose yeah. inbox. Yeah, yeah, I haven't, I haven't like tried to start a company in Taiwan, but I guess mm -hmm. like my friend, who started a company, I think, uh -huh. in the hardware space, uh -huh. primarily was saying that, uh, for example, it's harder to incorporate a, co a company in Taiwan. Like, it's harder to incorporate uh -huh. uh, an LLC than, like, in the United States. It's like, uh -huh. like, you can do it in, like, half a day or something, but I guess it's, like, a, a multi-week process here. Are you, are you yeah, uh, we've shortened that. Uh, I think it used to be a, like, physical face-to-face -face process uh, for most people. It could now be done online, uh, but I'm not pretending that uh, something like the stripes and uh, you know click here to start a yeah. company. Yeah, 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 uh, company yeah, yeah. as a start, company starting as a service uh, exists yeah. in Taiwan currently. Probably the whole process still takes uh, a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I think up to four weeks if I'm not mistaken. But at least it's quite streamlined, mm -hmm. and we have a uh, like startup uh, help center, uh, mm -hmm. and actually the Northern Startup Lab Center is actually just mm -hmm. across the uh, aisle. It's actually that building. <laughs> so so you, you can go to the startup hub and they'll walk you through the process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and a lot of like um, a lot of technology in Taiwan is, is hardware and it, it feels like the software community mm -hmm. is more nascent. There are there are like some Taiwanese software companies, mm -hmm. but it feels like there aren't as there are many like big brands that mm -hmm. are like Kind of well known outside Taiwan. Well, there are, there are two business accounts, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, many uh, true, yeah, enterprises are powered by say, a like they, they, they appear yeah, and yeah. things like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't say on their website "powered by appear." Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. It's like less less like cons yeah. consumer brands. They, they don't say yeah. "powered by Trend Micro." Right? Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was just yeah, I was just curious uh -huh. about that. Sure, sure. Um, I think that's most most of what I wanted to ask about. Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. curious. About um, with uh, let's see, and with like with the Polis stuff, were you working with? Because so I know I know the Polis is was created by some guys in Seattle. That's right. That they're, That's right. They're they're now uh, the, pivoted into a uh, foundation. I think it's called yeah. Math and Democracy. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure if it's actually being used. It's been used in a few other places around the world, but I'm not yeah. actually sure. But if you, if you like, in Denmark, in Denmark uh, yeah. the Canadian government did a French translation, a bilingual interface. Singapore used it for youth engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, there's quite a few users, um, and our contribution in penetration testing this and so on also bolstered uh, the government support from other parts in the world because mm -hmm. they now know that it's more cyber security hardened. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess, like, I guess ultimately why I'm asking a lot of these questions is because I, I think it'd be interesting to introduce some of the same ideas in the United States sure. and work towards it's some, be, some it's of the It's been used in, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I remember hearing uh, about that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I guess like one of the problems is, uh, or like, like Taiwan is a little more, I, I think, dense and homogenous and just like smaller in general. The like, United States is like very big. And I, I think one, mm -hmm. one advantage, I guess, of Taiwan is that like if, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you're having an argument with someone in Gaoshan, like you, mm -hmm. you could, you chances are you've been to Gaoshan because it's mm -hmm. only like a few hours on the train. But you can say there. that in many of the smaller states, like New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although, although I guess like in the United States, things t tend to get nationalized. Like, mm -hmm. that's the for better or for worse. Like, media is like very national now because uh -huh. a lot of smaller media companies can't can't continue to compete. So they have like big national brands like the New York Times or CNN um, mm -hmm. that that have more of a national focus. So a lot of people's news also has a national bent to it. Uh -huh. So people tend to get very involved in issues that are actually kind of like not even directly affecting them. Yeah, but, but from the yeah. Bowling Green uh, experience, yeah. I think the rough consensus of people like putting art into STEM education, yeah. like diversifying the broadband choices yeah. and things like that are decidedly local. Yeah. So, so I think it's just a matter of airtime given. Uh, yeah. As you said, the national media, of course, focus on national issues. Yeah. Uh, I would argue even the uh, more anti-social corner of social media, like on Facebook and so on, uh, also the, the viral memes tend to be uh, national or even uh, uh, international uh, in focus. But uh, if you look into the more pro-social uh, corner 
owners. Uh, in Taiwan, of course, we have the PTT, which is the equivalent of Reddit, but it's run by the social sector, like literally National Taiwan University Student Pet Project. Uh, and because they don't have shareholders or advertisers, uh, naturally, the local issues like the police in Kentucky, uh, Bowling Green, uh, surfaces up and, and people discover the more pro-social aspect of things. So I think the, there's a lot to be done uh, if you use the keyword digital public infrastructure. Uh, you, you probably see quite a few uh, communities working on to recreate the experience of town halls and public parks and public libraries and so on, but in the digital space. So we don't have to deliberate about uh, our agenda on putting arts into education or diversifying broadband on the uh, you know not, uh, digital equivalent of the nightlife district where there's private bouncers selling addictive drinks, which is Facebook, uh, <laughs> right? yeah. so that we can we can talk on public infrastructure that are also digital. Yeah, um, but just like a side note, you mentioned PTT. I like spent like a while trying to sign up for an account. I have trouble okay. because I think it's open only to NTU students. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's why. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's I, I, literally I, NTU. I, I thought it was okay. Gotcha. I thought I thought it was like anyone in Taiwan, but then I try to sign up, and they're like, no, uh -huh. you need like a yeah. I think you need like an NTU. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's right. Um. Cool. Uh, and so I think that's most. Yeah, that's most of the questions that I had. Um. Is this um. I, I think you're changing the format of the office hours going forward, right? That's right. So starting next month, uh, only registered social innovation organizations uh, mm -hmm. can book the time. And mostly it's because uh, the, the accountability also matters. Mm -hmm. uh, when people uh, walk in, I want to understand that our conversation is for the betterment uh, mm -hmm. of the public good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if someone is registered as a social innovator, mm -hmm. then at least once a year, they have to publish a public account mm -hmm. uh, of them doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a threshold that's actually not that hard. Yeah. So if you complete this 30 days startup creating process, yeah. you can also register on the social innovation platform. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. Yeah. I think I think it covers all, all the questions that I had. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was nice meeting you. Um, mm -hmm, cool. I guess I'll. Yeah, I guess yeah, we can wrap up here. And, mm -hmm. Unless you have any questions you wanted to ask me. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. But. Uh, well, okay. yeah. Uh, are you in, uh, um, in touch with the uh, TaiwanGoCard.com community? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I, I, um, I haven't gone to any of their meetings yet, but I want uh -huh. me to go to uh, go to some of them. But yeah, uh, yeah. There's, there's like a digital community because they they post something yeah. very much like the rescue action by you. Yeah. yeah. Because the original GoCard website uh, from the government was so horrible, they just yeah. created a, a new one on GitHub, yeah. and yeah. then they get invited by the National Development Council. Yeah. So now GoCard.nat.gov.tv is actually co-created by those forks. Um, yeah. So the fork gets merged back, and, and yeah. I think we really need uh, more people doing that. Uh, you ask yeah. about how to foster innovation, yeah. but people systemically forking the government. I think yeah. it's one of the best ways. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's really cool. Um, awesome. Well, anyway, yeah, it's it great to meet you. Um, I shake your awesome. hand for I guess the pandemic. So yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, really cool. good questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank yep. you. Yep. 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 Yep.